Welcome to Detroit Bass Player's first bass player interview with the founder, maybe, of, or at least the uh, administrator of Detroit Bass Player's on Facebook. What's up, Kerry? What's up, man? Now, we've not already been together. We hooked up at Ralphie's show and everything. Uh, and had a few bass players out there. I really hate that I missed that uh, photograph at the Motown Museum. But what you up to, man? What's happening? Nothing, man. I'm just playing at church, playing a little upright and playing a red rooster, and that's about it. Okay, now what's the red, red rooster? The red rooster is this here. This what this started out as the Marcus Miller 5, but the, the big pick guard thing wasn't really happening for me. So uh, I got this this body from Mike Harrington, another Detroit bass player, who got it from James Simonson, another Detroit bass player. And... Um, no, I got the body from Mike, from uh, James Simonson. Yeah, sure did. It's a warm-up body, so it's got Lindy Fraylin pickups, it's got a Barlady preamp, badass bridge, and the Marcus Miller five neck. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Okay, well, let me ask you a question, man. How long you been? Um, how long you been playing bass? First of all, I, mean, I started playing in church at night in 1976. Uh, it was my first year of college, so I must have been 18, 19 years old. Back then. Plus, you see how the names get tagged. Well, why, why, uh, why did you start? Why did you start playing the bass guitar, man? Because I was in church and I heard Fred Hammond and uh, Danny Burchett. That's people and that's what I, what I heard. And then a couple people in Asia. You you so that that's I mean that seemed like kind of late for a bass player, but that's what you heard and you started playing. Yes, sir. I heard it and that's when it spoke to me. And I always say I didn't pick the bass, the bass picked me. Right. Okay. So, who are some of your bass favorite bass players? Um, it would have to be Fred Hammond, and then the first guy I emulated was or tried to emulate was Lamont Johnson because he was playing with another Detroit bass uh, player. Detroit bass player who's currently teaching has four slots left. You better get with him. I, but he, I was, already put up he was playing with, he, I heard him on a record, uh, This Lost Must Be Heaven. No. Nope. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, it was a gospel <laughs> song yeah, four spots. I said, Man, by uh, Gloucester Williams me. Me back, yeah. in the King mm. James Version called No Not One. He was playing a fretless bass. And I heard him, I was like, who is this cat playing all this bass? And mm -hmm. on the album, I still remember it, it said E.L. Johnson. Mm -hmm. And I said, who is E.L. Johnson? E. Lamont Johnson. And I chased after this guy for about five years till I found him and I used to drive out to Belleville to take lessons from him. He, he used to live in Belleville? Yeah. 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 He used to have a jam session out there a long time ago too. He used to live in an apartment out in Belleville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite bass players of all time. Uh, I, I didn't hear of him until Brainstorm, uh, This Must Be Heaven. Uh, and he used to be he used to be flying on that plucky hand. Oh, yeah. you know. Okay, so uh, anybody else favorites? Uh, Dan Plisco, who taught me how to do this. Oh, yeah. And what is this? What are you doing? What is that called right there? He taught there? me to do walking bass lines. So he taught me my scales, my chords, chord progressions, and how to build a walking bass line. He taught me to. Uh, to, to read bass lines, uh, how to, how to transcribe bass licks off records, and how to write and how to uh, write them out. Okay, all right. So my question to you, uh, me personally, I, I like to teach bass guitar. I like to think I know a few things, but but I'm humble enough to always learn something. Um, walking bass lines. <clears throat> uh, when 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 is a good time to use walking bass lines? When the music calls for it. I mean, if you're playing jazz or you're playing bebop you or... Heck, I remember Fred Hammond playing walking bass lines on Vanessa Bell Armstrong's gospel record. So, you know, it, it whenever the music calls for it. Right. And, and um, what are some of the other techniques? I mean, you got walking bass lines. In, in case somebody is listening to this or watching this and they want to pick up the bass, whether they five years old or whether they're 50, they want to pick up the bass. What are some of the other things that you can do with the bass? What's some of the other playing styles? Like we just heard of walking. Give me some other stuff. The bass is one of the most, I think, one of the most versatile instruments for different types of styles and techniques and stuff like that. What else can you do on the bass besides walk on it? 
Well, I, I, I would say this. Go listen to the bass, best bass players. Go listen to Victor Wooten and Marcus Miller and Ron Carter and Paul Chambers. Because mm -hmm. those are the guys, like you saw Eric do the... And that's called a palm muting, right? Slapping. Well, okay, now, now, before you start that, you calling it slap. Uh, Thump, whatever. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Thump, slap, so, 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 what you saying is, you said slap. What, what's the full name? Slap and what? Slap and pop. Thump, oh, slap. Thump and pluck. Slap and pop is is the same thing, right? Slap bass. Is it the is thumping and plucking and slapping and popping? Is that the same thing? Is it in my world? It is okay. And you got an upstroke. Okay. Just combine them. No, no. What, what is regular playing when you just use that? What do they call that when you just put those fingers out there? Yeah, what's that called? Playing the bass. They call it pizzicato style. What they call it? Pizzicato. Pizzicato. Yeah. Any any other any other different ways to play the bass? Harmonics. Okay. Yeah. Tapping? What about tapping? I don't tap too much. I don't know too much about that either. You can go back to Eric on that. Yeah, but okay, so you got any other instrument is is any other instrument as versatile as the bass as far as like all those different things you went to popping and thumping and slapping. Probably. I, I, I uh, think, I uh, think all tapping. It's just limited to the whoever's playing it's imagine. Mm -hmm. I've seen guys do the exact same things on on violins, guitars, pianos. Really? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Guy got inside the panel, started banging yeah, on the yeah, strings. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I did see that. See goes inside and hand mutes the strings, the ones. Yeah, I did see Chick ones. do that. Yeah, he does that a lot. Okay, so uh, I had a question. I kind of forgot what it was. Uh, oh, oh yeah, I remember now. What made you? What made you decide to uh, create? The Detroit bass players page on first Facebook. Well, first of all, Craig Scully created. I was kind of surfing and I saw this page and I and I said, well, what is this Detroit bass players page? And I I contacted Craig and Craig said, well, it was just something I put together for a few of my friends. And I asked him, I said, well, would you mind if I tried to you know boost it up a bit? And I think at the time that that he had started it, it might have had eight maybe ten people on it. And uh, within a few weeks. It got up to over 100, and then a couple more hundred, and now it's at well over 500. Right, so so you didn't create it, it was created by who again? Craig Sconey. Craig Sconey. You think I can get an interview with him one day for Detroit bass player? He's a heck of a bass player, a heck of a singing bass player. Oh, that's uh, I can't do. Rock and roll, rock, I mean, he's a great player. Okay, cool. So uh, we got to talk with him. Now you know my goal is to interview every bass player. Uh, I probably never achieve that goal, but striving for it is going to be uh, cool for me. Well, I think that's a great that's a great idea because well, I tell you what, Ivan, the, the the thing that I saw about the Detroit bass players, there's a lot of other pages uh, like Talk Bass and um, you know all these other blogs, but the people. The good thing about that is it serves a purpose. They're all over the world, and where I can't drive to your house and meet with you, what I saw in the Detroit bass players was a chance to take folks, men, women, children. We've got folks that are in middle school, elementary school, um, Detroit symphonic players like uh, Rick Robinson and and uh, um, 
you know, to, uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy and DS Soul players. So it's a chance if you want to reach out to Bob Hurst, who's a Tonight Show veteran, uh, Bradford Marcel's veteran, mm -hmm. and now he teaches jazz studies at the University of Michigan, or Rodney Whitaker, who's the director of jazz studies at um, Michigan State. He played with the Wynton Marcellus. You can reach out to these guys and go see them. Right. So it's like when the internet started, I think it's the greatest thing in the world. We got access to to, to, to footage, but I'm sitting in Reggie Canning's house. You know, it's like I can't go to Marcus Miller's house. Right. You know, I can go to Ralph Armstrong's yep. house. Mm -hmm. I, I can go to Big Ivan's house. I can go to Kern Bradley's house or, or uh, Fred Hammond's house or his house. Oh yeah, Pastor Eric Thomas' house. I've already been there, but you see, and I, and I got a chance the other week to meet Brian Rossi and his band. Oh, Byron. Brian. Yeah. It's Brian. Brian. Yeah, and it's got that Y it throws everybody oh, up. Yeah. It's Brian, B R Y, and his band does the Free Credit Report dot com. Yeah, commercial. I just printed him too. Oh, oh, that's that that's that cat. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Oh, okay. So you look at the commercial. Okay. And these are all Detroit bass player yep. type dudes. Yep. Wow. You go to Terrence Palmer you know, and hang out with Terrence Palmer, mm -hmm. who's recorded probably a hundred some mm -hmm. or better CDs with gospel greats and Israel and, you know, Fran Hammond. So you can go meet the folks that have really helped create the music and sit down and meet them and yeah. pick up some tips or just get inspired. Who else? Uh, I mean, I, I love the Detroit bass players uh, page on Facebook. Uh, one of my favorites of all is uh, is Mike Harrington, and to see him come on there. Who else? Who else is some of your favorites on Detroit bass players? Some of our favorite Detroit bass players that might be on the page that we can chat with and, and you know follow them and stuff like that. You should yeah. check out Kevin Chow. Kevin who? Chow. C H O W N. Chow. I think it's Chow. Yeah. He was from Detroit, moved to L A. He posted up a, a job posting for a major tour. Uh, you look at guys like Mike Harrington. Again, I've already mentioned Rodney Whitaker, Rick Robinson, Dan Lamont Pistol, Johnson. Lamont Johnson, Giovanni Callier, Fernando Saunders. Fernando Saunders played with John McLaughlin. Right, he lives in Europe now, and he chimes in. Michael Henderson's on the page. Right. You know, Jimmy Ali, Al Turner. These are some great right. players. You know, and a lot of the guys that I'm just just not meeting. Byron Miller is Byron, another one who I, used to I, play with George Duke. Tell you what's funny is um, there are folks on the Detroit bass players page that could help me with more than my bass plan. Uh, there's a uh, Anthony Giordano who's a foot doctor. Okay. No, there's a Brian Wojciechowski who installs floors. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, even yeah. if I can't play a bass, I can get my house worked on, my feet worked <laughs> on. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Robert Livinois is the superintendent of Warren Consolidated Schools. So you've got people from all walks of life. So to me, the Detroit Bass Force wasn't just about playing bass. You've got Michelle Hobbs, who's a, an engineer at Toyota. Mm -hmm. Great player. Mm -hmm. You know, so gigs come up, you know, people say, hey, Bugs Battle was looking for a bass player. People are selling gear, so I think it's just a, it's just a great thing to pull the community. Y'all want to buy this? Y'all want to buy this? The ready? <laughs> it's for <the> sale. <laughs> All right, Reggie selling. What, what kind of equipment is it? Well, that's the SWR Mobase head, and it's got the foot controller with it. Those those speakers are uh, PBXL cabs. Uh, two, 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 uh, two, two twelve or two ten and four ten. Uh, you got a price in mind? Uh, shoot one at me, we'll come up with something. Uh, I'm sure you're trying to get some more gear, some lighter gear, some lighter but more power gear. Alright, well, so, uh, Carrie, I'm going to let you go, man. I've been holding you uh, hostage for a few minutes. I appreciate the stuff. We might try to do another interview with you at a later time uh, and talk about some uh, music lessons or something like that. Or would you? Oh, you going to give me some? No, I want to. I want. I want you to teach me some. We <laughs> <laughs> some music lessons. It's gonna be Big Ivy teaching me. Until uh, till the next time, we got Carrie Lacey, Carrie Lacey. We got Reggie Canty, and we got Eric Thomas. All the Magic bass players, and we got myself, which is there. I go right there. Y'all take it easy. Play something. Play me out.
Play me some uh, Stanley Clark. Ain't nobody said Stanley Clark. Oh, James, James. I got sunshine. <laughs>